what they call itself, uh, uh, Bayfront. They first called itself Bayfront Crips, cause we was Shoreline Crips. So they tried to name themselves kind of, kind of close after. So they tried to name themselves Bayfront Crips before they was Graveyard Crips, and then it was Graveyard after the fact. The Venice had family. With my comrade. Yeah. They was but, fair ties. <laughs> yeah. We always fell out. But cause we all were kicking the ass. But uh <laughs> we stay still our comrade because we got family out there. Oh, so it never really it's got the youngsters. It's the youngsters that we fallen out. So it never turned into a full fledged No. Yeah, yeah, it did. For the dime moves in the locs, for the six foes on spokes, for the OGs that did a dime, came back around on parole, for the homegirls with the scrap game, little homies that game bang, from Pelican Bay to YA, rearrange your mind frame. Yeah, I know what you've been through, uh, shit you had to go tend to. Your mama gave birth on the turf, I know them killers you kin to. This for the lost generation, broke as hell, man. A lot of, you know, lifting weights, and I was on swore, they start calling me Big Miz. Original stutter box. East side fire who's Pablo Bishop, Man City Gangster Bloods. Yeah, Max, video, you, video, you, you know, this is for sure, for sure. Yeah, Max, video, you, video, you, open your soul. This is a beginning. It turned into a full fledged war because they started trying to hang with the PBGs and they thought the PBGs was going to smash Venice. When the LA can't gang start coming out there selling drugs. We ain't never rolled on, so they ain't been rolling. So, you know, we try to let the, the homies try to let them know to run with us, stay on our ticket. But they choose to stay over there because they thought that them cats was going to overturn the turf because they was from LA. But they got overturned. So, let me, let me ask you this Who is Venezuela's original first name? The first Bible? Oh, shit. 60s. Uh, yeah. Hell yeah. The 60s job. was our first rival. We let, let me tell you a story about Venice. Venice, can we, we stayed we, Crips. We, we used to get into the football game. Right. We stayed Crips for the longest. We 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 didn't have no we, we you know our thing was we wasn't gonna have no enemies. Before LA and all everybody was having enemies and things of that nature. We had allies. We try to we stay crip lovers well, for we, a long time and things of that nature. Till incident happened at the skating ring yeah, and this that the other. Oh uh, it, it, it happened in Santa Monica at that council. That's where she happened at. No, they didn't just start there, it started from the skating ring. You know what year that was? No, I don't. But mm -hmm. the we wasn't even up yet. Yeah, it well, happened in Santa Monica. No, that was after that, that was after the fact of the concert. We was, in, we was into it. We was into it. We was into it already with them. We was into it already with them before they started coming to Santa Monica to when they when they had the uh at the Pacific Auditorium. At the Civic Auditorium, Pacific they had all the free concerts there and things of that nature. But we was already into it with the sixties. Cause it happened at the skating ring behind the schoolyard, and they said, "Why y'all taking up for them niggas? Whoop the whoop, this, that, and the other, and blah blah this." But Venice had family from there. You know what I'm saying? So you wouldn't consider graveyards y'all original crip rivalry? Nah, nah, they wasn't. You wouldn't consider PBG y'all? Nah, rivalry? nah, that nah. What, what's That's the, way down the line. Really? Yeah. What, what, what's, what's the origin of, of the PBG rivalry? What's, why'd you guys fall out with them? Uh, the, the youngsters got to answer that for you because I don't know that much about that rivalry when it first took off and start, you know, start happening. And but you're my main rivalry now. Yeah. You guys have been in Shoreline since 1972. Originally. We were 71 to 72, really. Where, where were the Venice 13s at during that time? They was here. They was here. Already. They was here. They've they been, been here. before. Yeah. They was here before. They was already a clique. As a gang, they was here. They was here as a gang. Not before the black. No, not before the black. Not before the black. No. They was here when the blacks was here. They weren't here in the beginning, though, when the blacks first came, Bird. They weren't here then. Do you know what year the Venice 13s formed into a gang? No. No. And what was your guys' relationships with the Venice 13s throughout the 1970s? We was tight. Who's our comrade? Real tight. So in 1978, 79, 80, something happened between the blacks and the Mexicans in Venice. What happened? 
Those are trying they to- They killed one of my homeboys. Why? I, I don't know why. They said he stole something from me. But those are issues we don't like to talk about because right. they can start a gang of right. confusion cool. and, and conflicts and things there, of that nature. There's an article. Yeah. Of you guys. Yeah, but you got to keep that article and read that one because <laughs> those are things that we don't want right. to talk about. You know, good. that those are things that will bring back new conflicts. You know, because stuff still running real deep. Right. Yeah. Because right. we cool with them right now. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. Right. Shut up, man. All right. Yeah. What's up, bro? All right. What's up, bro? What's up, bro? Uh, when we came out up over there in the schoolyard hood, it was Bible Crips hood <laughs> and things of that nature. And then it was the Harlems that was out on that side. Then it was the Marvins. Mm -hmm. You know, the rest of them wasn't even out there right. and things of that nature. You know, at that time. And then the 60s from the other side, from right, right down there, going that far west. Right. You know, and the A-Trade Gangsters. You know, and you know. It wasn't that, it wasn't, wasn't that many other gangs. Oh, what's up, man? I'm KK, uh, man, from Venice Showline Cribs, you know. As far as, like, us in the essays, as far as, like, Cover City, like, that pretty much started, like, when I moved out there. You know, because the Cover City's pretty much just had a beef with the essays. They weren't really beefing with us. You know what I'm saying? And then I, um, my moms ended up relocating us in, like, 78 to Cover City. So we didn't even stay in the projects at the time. We stayed on Slauson, on the dead end. According to the local news media, the Culver City gang turned the dead end at Bologna Creek into the main drag for trafficking marijuana, crack, and heroin. This was considered a danger zone for outsiders. So, you know, it was like the first day. That's the main thorough. That's what I'm saying. The first day I'm, I got there, Shit, it was on. I'm, I'm coming to go to school. I'm still going to uh, Mark Twain. And uh, as I'm coming out, the other kids is coming out, walking to school. So they like, hey, where you from? Because they know blacks. It's like, I didn't even know it, though. Because, you know, my first day, hadn't been out there. We moved there on a the weekend. Like a Monday, I'm going to school. So as I'm walking to school, they like, hey, where you from? I'm like, Venice. I don't know nothing else. I'm like 12 years old. You know what I'm saying? I've been in Venice my whole life. So they start following me. They follow me all the way to, um, what's that, Washington and, like, Washington and Inglewood. So I get on the bus, Washington bus, to come over here to go to um, Mark Twain. So when I get home, it's like those three and another one in front of the house. So as soon as I, they see me, it's just on. Wasn't no, even no words after, you know, that morning. You know what I mean? So I was already, from that time on there, labeled as, you know, Venice is over here. You know, so. So they didn't know the difference between Venice 13 and Venice Shoreline. They, they had no idea. They knew the difference. No, they, they knew the difference. They didn't have a difference. When we was in school, nah, they knew the difference. The thing about it, did yeah. they didn't. Because we was going to school with each other and we was living together. When they was coming through here back then, they seen blacks and essays at the park. You know what I mean? Like we we always kind of as far as the the V thirteens and us we always kind of like you say grew up together mm -hmm. and we had our little things with them you know what I'm saying but that was like the early seventies mm -hmm. you know what I mean so you, you're the first shoreline to move on that side most definitely you look young as fuck too. yeah but I was good with it <laughs> you know what I'm saying like you know my pops big bopper you know what I'm saying he was good with them hands and he raised me to be the man of my family to protect because he was always in and out of jail. You know what I mean? So as a young, I knew them things, how to throw them things. I wasn't, as far as shooting, I wasn't, you know, that, that came later, but as far as head ups, two and three, after fighting my dad since I was like this, man, fighting people my age was like, it was nothing. So why didn't you go to Marina? Why did you keep going to- uh, I ended up going to Marina, but I finished my seventh and eighth grade at Mark Twain. There was a point in time where the shorelines basically dominated those projects. Can you kind of like explain when you guys actually infiltrated the projects? Well, and who was behind it? Um, I moved out there. I, I, like I say, I moved out there in '78. Uh, 
I was 12. And so at the time, it was it was people, we had families out there that, was, that lived in Venice. Mm -hmm. And they were older you. than me, mm -hmm. but they weren't gang banging. You feel me? It was like they was they was like on that square shit, like wearing the members only jackets, you know, had them little clicks like that, you know, like Marionwood, you know, which was in the projects. And then they had Marionwood. And I think they had like um, like another click that was Allen Street. You know what I'm saying? But they had they little shit on their jackets. So but the essays was cool with that because that was a part of their community. They wasn't a threat. See, when I'm a young dude and I was a threat, you know what I mean? Like just by me being from Venice, I was a threat to them. So are you So you, are you the one that was in the projects recruiting other blacks into Venice? I never recruited nobody. So how did, how did the projects We all kind of, more people came from out of Venice. You know what I mean? We had some younger homies that came up out of Venice. And, and when they came, you know, like the homie S-Man, you know what I'm saying, Lil S-Man, you know what I'm saying? He was the one more, recruiting you know what i'm saying like pretty much we all had the venice background but it was just like so wait a minute s, -S man is the original venice kid he in a project no nah, he's not original um project kid oh, he's he's not, he's a project kid. nah mm -hmm. see he, we was young though so yeah, you gotta I'm understand venice. dog we was still you know what i'm saying we was babies having to fight grown-up shit when we was here in the hood we had we didn't have that shit we didn't have it. I mean, we might fight with the homie here and there, but we, you know, we loving each other, though. Out there, man, it changed the whole geographic of the whole thing. Did, did those projects end up being a, 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 like a second click of show lines, or you guys always considered that one and the same? Well, people tried to make it a separate click. I know for a minute they was trying to run around here call, um, claiming Southside being a show line over there. You feel me? Kill it. You know, because see, once once that see to me, the youngsters they was running with it, and I and I can understand it because we did have our own separate, you know what I mean thing. Because at, at, and basically at the time, the homies weren't coming to the projects. The Dude, we the was on our own. Everybody out there was on our own. We weren't coming to the hood actually telling nobody for help. Matter of fact, I think a couple homies came to the hood and said, like when we was going through shit in the beginning, and the homies was like, man, that's on y'all. See, it was a money thing. You know what I mean? When all the drugs oh, fell oh, down, oh, you know. There was a point in time when you guys weren't communicating. We, communi we communicated, but we was on our own as far as over there. The youngsters were You know why? Because see, at, at the same time, it was in the low key, like niggas was scared of them, them Culver cities. You know what I'm saying? Like they weren't coming there. And when we got the comies to come, finally come to, to the projects, we had a football game. Remember we had that football game? We had that big ass football game. And we was all out there, everybody. You know what I'm saying? And that was like the first time that our numbers was like that. And I think once they seen our numbers was like that, the pressure from them kind of, it kind of backed up a little bit. But we was always having, here and there confrontations with them. Little homies fighting with them at school, you know what I'm saying? And then, you know, after school, you know how they meet up in the alley right there off, off the marina, you know, a block off the marina in the alley. So all of a sudden, they big homeboys is there. See, we never had, I was like the biggest homeboy that we had that was claiming the hood. And I was still a young dog. And my niggas was younger than me. Let me ask you this, I came across some information I don't know if it's true or false that before those shorelines in the projects, there was a game called in Culver City Insane Crips. Way before my time. Mm -mm. Way before my time, and I never even heard the. I never even heard anything of that nature. No. In the whole time I was in Culver City. No. I never heard that. You know no. why? Ben was the Cities first one Chris that ever been. The Culver Cities never had a black gang in Culver City. Exactly. It's always just been. It's so always, it was, it was no always been job. Culver Cities or the blacks that was in Culver City. They they joined Culver City. So, you know what I'm saying? So it was that beef that we had because we was like having little beefs with the blacks that was claiming Culver, Culver City, City because our numbers were they so small. From LA. You know what I mean? They weren't a part of Venice, but they was a black in that community. We was just trying to get our numbers 
Oh, you know, so some of the black guys was joining Culver City and not Venice. Oh, most definitely. People that live in Culver City. I mean, you got to look Jesus, at it, though. They Culver came City. from L.A. It was like, to, to if Culver you look City. at it, blacks and men. It's, it's almost like we went in their numbers. They were small from the beginning. They had the whole projects. And see, eventually, like I said, what happened over time, you know, we warm with them within the projects. We having shootouts within the projects, dog. Like right there. Like, in, but the thing about it, we all, you know, nobody went nowhere. We right back out there the next day. You know what I mean? So it was like, and then we had some little, you know, we had, basically we had blacks running the gym. Eddie Dabs, hey, yeah. you feel me? Eddie Dabs out of Venice. So, you know, I'm knowing Dabs because he used to run Oakwood when I was a kid. So when he out there, I'm like, the, the, um, the gym was almost like our safe haven. And see, that's he, where we all kind of, you know, merged to. And see when he, when, and see Eddie Dab when he was was a, the, the the person from the uh, ran the gym over here. He moved went to Culver City, and then he gave parties on um, on on Thursdays. On Tuesday, we used to go to Miss Terry's in Santa Monica. Shoreline's dominated that. You know that. And, and, um, uh, and then when Culver Cities was on Thursday, Eddie Dab used to get the parties out there. We dominated that. And the Culver Cities was on one side of the, in the gym, and we was on the other side in the gym. But they beef was with the V1 and not with us. But still, we was Venice. And then it was conflicts about that because we were still from Venice. You know what I mean? So that's still like, mm, they still didn't like it. And this thing is, but we, like he said, Still had fights and still had things, but we come there with strong presence on Thursday night when Eddie Dab gave the thing. So you know, we stood in our pack and our crew. They was in their crew and they pack. They was in the back of the gym. He was in the front of the gym. Let me ask you something: Were the Cobra Cities flying red rags back then? Always. always. It's always been. It's always. Always been. Never stopped. And that was the whole conflict always. with us and them. You know what I mean? Because they already knew. You know, we was blue off the top. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, I mean, the thing about it, like, I had so many fights with them, and it's just, it's just so crazy because you know how time happens and everything. Dude, they just ended up respecting me on my get out. And I was like, at pretty much, like, that's KK. You feel me? Like, it just, the, 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 even though I was still from, from Venice and all that, I was just older now. And I wasn't out there doing the stupid shit that the little homies was doing no more. You know, it was more of a like, you know, I, I had family. I had shit that I, you know, that came a little bit more important, but I still supported. I still supported. Did y'all have Mexicans from Shola? We did. Did y'all recruit? Not a in small, there. A small, for a small time. Oh, in there? No, real talk. And it's crazy because them ones that was banging with us, it was like we had one, one dude, his name was um, uh, Vic. You know what I'm saying? Vic, he was a cool motherfucker. He was like, he grew up with S and he was like they age. So um, he ended up joining the hood and he was banging the show line for a minute. But see what happened was the pressure. Now the pressure gets applied by his folks and his homies. He can't do that no more. Switched up to Culver yeah, he, City? He, I mean, that, he was always Culver City. You see, if you ask me, he was always Culver City. He was. It was it was almost like a fad, in a sense, because we had almost got to the to the point to where like we cool, you know what I mean? Because we here, we you know what I'm saying? Like we had pretty much the whole projects at this point. The essays was over there on Brad on Braddock. They had that little parking lot. That's where they sold their yay and they hung out at. Dude, we had the whole projects. After a while, um, like the '90s, man, it was pretty much that was us. Let, let, let me get a date. Um, oh, was it around 92 or before that when the pressure came? It was like 80, yeah, before so it was before 88, that. 89 when we okay. had the homies come through there and we played the, um, the football game. Okay. And then the pressure, but the pressure was always there. It was, right, it right, was, right. it got lessened. You know what I mean? It was, it wasn't, it wasn't so toe to toe or physical all the time. Mm. It was, it was spurts. It was spurts, like somebody would get into with somebody, you know, on, on some shit. And they thing was, see, we always had hands. And see, they, and you know, my thing was like this, man, putting your hands on them. See, that's like, you can beat them up, dude. You can beat them up. But 
For what? You know what I mean? Because you got to look at the bigger picture. Beating up one of them could cause one of our deaths. You well, know? What was the camel that broke the straw? The straw that broke the camel's back. For us, why we ain't there now? Yeah. What? 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 Okay. Um. Um, one of the little out. homies, one of the little homies is walking to the store. So, he, you know, going to the store, you have to walk through the parking lot, the first parking lot to get the brat out and get to the, the shopping center. That's where they, the SA sold they shit at, right? So one of the little homies see a smoker that owe him some money. At this time, SA, they up there making a, a transaction. So as dude get his shit, you know, the yay, He's going to handle the money. The little homie comes snatch the money. Right? So they get physical right there. It goes down. Bam. Little homie Tito, he didn't have shit to do with it. Rest in peace. He's coming home. He stays like, because I stay in that first apartment on Braddock. So my, my, my alley and when I came home, they were always there. That's where they, they, they socialized. That's where they hung out late at night, all that. So he's coming home. He's about one, two, three buildings. The third building from the end. He's coming home. And Tito was probably about maybe, maybe about 17. He riding his little bike. He coming home. They dump on him. They hit Tito like five times. He don't die though. So that night, the homies, you know, go do their thing on a couple of them. Next morning, it's like, man, you know, we will be like, hey, is it cool? Is it cool? So, yeah, that's how he's like, man, you know, shit, it, it, I already could tell the temperature, it, man, the temperature's boiling right now. You know what I mean? First of all, it was disrespectful for the little homie to do what he did, which was started the whole, it was nothing. It was like, it was nothing worth it. So when he did that, you know, S, S and um, B, B face, baby face from Culver City, they having this little conversation because they both around the same age. I'm just over here on the sideline because it, it, it kind of pertains to me, but it really don't because they everybody already know I don't fuck around like that. You know what I mean? So they over there talking. That's like, man, we good. Cover City, baby face like, um, if I don't get at you by the night, you know, do what you got to do. So off that, I'm already knowing. That's a problem. So while they having this little, trying to work shit out, the two little homies, this SA homie over here and the little homie over here, they over here having this little eye contact shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, right? So nigga like, man, homie like, man, I want to get down with him. Cover City asked the little homie, do you want to get down? I'm like, man, come on, dude. They get down. It was pretty much a wrap after that. You know what I'm saying? Cause that, that night, some shit went down, some shootings and shit. That next morning, I come out thinking everything is like cool. I'm, I'm, I'm out, you know, early in the morning, setting up shop, you know what I'm saying? About to get my little bread, you know? So I'm out there, ain't nobody out there though. And I'm, it's, it's about eight o'clock now. Ain't nobody out. I've been out about seven. Shit is slow, but you could feel something is in the air. Like, what the fuck? All of a sudden, man, I'm sitting there. About 10 Culver Cities come through the building. These motherfuckers got backs and gats. Because hmm. the homies' cars is all lined up right here. Back to back. They're taking bats, breaking windows out. They got the red spray paint. Spray painting the dates, right? Hitting up Culver City and shit on the cars. I'm like, I'm over here. I'm across the street. Man, these motherfuckers, I can't, I'm trying not to be too suspicious and like try to get my pistol out the fucking stash because they, this shit is, motherfucker see me. This motherfucker, he's walking towards me. I'm like, oh shit. On me, this motherfucker, and, and, and I'll I never forget this man on everything, motherfucking gangster. Gangster from Culver City. He called dude. Hey. Motherfucker said, KK. He said, hey, so dude don't go back. He stay right there. He looking at dude, looking at me, looking at dude, looking at me. So dude walk up to him, whatever they said. You know, dude walked 
walk back across the street. Gangster came right there by the car and like, hey man, you good. I'ma stand right here. So he just stood on the side of my car and they did what they did. What, what year are we talking about right now? Ooh, ooh this was, uh, this was 90, ooh, I think it, that was like 96. 96? That's when I laid it down the line. 96, 97. Yeah, because it was, we was, we was bingo. Because see, my mom, see, they left. No, that was later. What you mean? That was much later. Then what? Then 96. No, the war started here in 94. No. Um, yeah, the war kicked against, off in the early 90s. Yeah, early 92. 90s here. Yeah, 94. You think it was that early? No, yeah, but that was a little bit earlier than that. Well, you know what? I'm, I might have. A little yeah, off with it. that because my mom still was there and I was still, mm -hmm. I was still let, out there. Let me ask you something. Was it was there a point in time where the actual residents of the projects was majority black? No, never, never, never. Did because it was always their base. This right. was it was always they always you know what I mean. So they, they looked at you guys as outsiders, right? I mean, yeah, but it, it, see the thing, the crazy thing about it was. I think it was it was it was it was more or less, but it, and it, when with, when did the kind of like that shit happen as far as the the blacks in the essays with, in the jails and shit? Because that shit kind of sprinkled. That's why I was asking. That shit kind of sprinkled to the streets. It didn't happen at that exact moment though that the shit was going on, but that was kind of like a lead up to uh, it. Uh, that that kind of the shorelines in there. because they got it. They they start allying with the Inglewoods. Right. The Inglewoods came in there one day, right? They came in there and they came, we was on um, on Marion with the little court curve right there by Petey House. We was right there. They sent somebody over there and climbed up the pole to tie some red rags up there. Right? So we like, all right, you know what I'm saying? We sitting there like, oh, this shit is cute. They in the middle of the field. They got their low riders. I mean, it's, 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 oh man, it's a beautiful day. Shit, we sent one of the little niggas up there. We set fire to him. You know what I'm saying? Then we tie our shit up there. The motherfuckers is running from across the motherfucking field. You know what I'm saying? Then we went to the little spot, Got everybody got strapped. We waited for him at the end of the building. We went to the end of the building by the fence where the creek is, and we all got back to back to the fence and waited for him. And as they came around that motherfucking curb, between them two apartments, everybody put your hands up. Everybody put your hands up. When you come around that corner, better have your hands up. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that that kind of, it was, it was like a stalemate for a minute, but then one times came. Then the one time came, we all kind of broke. You know what I mean? And the crazy part about it, one of the cover city end up coming up into our little spot with us with his pistol so when he when we come in we like hey hey you know what i'm saying he like oh, you know i'm just trying to get away like y'all so we you know we didn't do nothing to him you know we understood we you know but see the thing about it i wasn't i wasn't really trying to be a bully with them or trying to even act like because i always knew where i was let me ask you something when all this drama is going on in the projects, are the homies over here aware of what's going on? Or are they no. oblivious? No, they because no they live in here. They live in their thing. They, they going through what they going through day to day. This is our day to day function. Let me ask you something. Was there any white boys from Venice out of yeah. the projects? We had Ooh. G Mike. You know what I'm saying? We, we, we had, uh, we had G Mike and we had, uh, man, what's the new? called uh dirty and we had uh uh what's the, what's the yeah they all brothers so you know it was, it was a white white family of show lines in the projects yeah and they was more black than white they grew up black what happened to them um shit them niggas moved out you know they ain't nothing happened to them ain't nobody they ain't die mm -hmm. see our numbers only only time we lost somebody from the projects before all this and we didn't actually lose anybody while we was out there in the projects, 20 wars. We lost our homeboy, Big My, um, um, G Mike, early in the day. I, you know, they had, um, they was over there at the, um, in the marina. 
where they had the little video games, arcades and shit over there. Like they get another tour with some niggas over there and the homie ended up getting stabbed, you know, from that situation. But we, we didn't lose nobody actually while we was in the projects to any any wars. Let me ask you something. When y'all was in the projects and the dope gang was full fledged, were there any other outside black gangs in there hustling yeah. too? Yeah. Grape Street Watch and in the, um, the 60s.